Hi, this is Eric with VBAHowTo.com and today's video is on the donor and donations tracking database that you can find out on VBAHowTo.com and it's an overview of what this database is and actually it incorporates all the concepts that are in the, the course at VBAHowTo.com forward slash course you can also click down there in the description box below and I'll put a put a link down there this uh, like I said this incorporates all the concepts here's a uh, brief overview of it table of contents programming basics responding to user actions validating data user using function understanding scope the debugging tools handling runtime errors looping through code, working through record sets and automation. And to that point, we're looking at, um, I made a database that we're going to go over in this video as well. We're probably just going to get through, uh, we'll go module by module in these videos. And uh, you'd, be, uh, you'd be good to get the, get the book yourself if you want to speed up through this. But I'm going to cover uh, each module by module. In this module, uh, we're looking at declaring variables, initializing variables, variable lifetime, invoking another procedure, passing an argument per procedure, using a conditional select case structure, and using a conditional if structure. Okay, so. Here are this database. Let me point out what this database is. You see this on your screen. Uh, we have a it's donors and donations. So we have a list of donors at one table. Uh, all these people here. And I don't know where these names came from. And donations that each person gave and they gave here's the uh, this is a good example also of a donor I primary key and four keys okay I don't necessarily want to know I don't care about all the information about number who number 10 is because I could always pull that in. I just want to know that, okay, we're dealing with customer 10. Because this one, we're dealing with customer 21. Customer 21, or donor 21, gave these three donations. That way, if I change customer 21's address, uh, maybe they got married, or something happened and their last name changed, um, they want to make a modification to the city that they're living in, uh, the state, whatever. I could do that just by just finding out who customer 21 is. If I bring up the TBL donors, it's related on, on the donor ID. So if I look at customer 21 here, we have Aria Cruz. She moves from San Paulo to somewhere place else in Brazil. As she, I don't even know who that is, but oh, these these names must come from the Northwind database. But Aria, maybe I spelled her name wrong. I don't want to change it in three different places over here. So I just reference a number because the numbers don't change. Numbers don't don't lie about things. People lie, but numbers don't. Okay, another another uh, another concept for another another type of video, but numbers don't lie. Okay, so twenty one, uh, and they don't change real easy. So just like your social security number, it doesn't doesn't change. It's assigned to you when you're born, and until you eventually depart from the land of the living. Uh, die so it's yours yours alone uh because we're 31 belongs to andre 46 belongs to fran okay so 
I have my, I'm referencing my, okay, my main table is TBL donors, and my sub table is TBL donations, TBL donations. So I'm using the, the key from here, 21, I'm using it inside my related table, which is, which is the, the donations table. I'm relating and I'm saying, okay, look for customer 21 in that table right there. So that's that's a relational database model, relational database model, and relational database. And that's one a good thing about re relationships. Um, you could do that with Excel if you want. Uh, it's they're really not made for that, but uh, you could apply the same concept to, to uh, Excel if you want. But uh, keep keep access what it's good at it's a relational database and it relates data any big or any big database is that's a relational database like a, a SQL Oracle type database could be about the about the you're, you're gonna have by SQL okay you're gonna have a, a, a primary and foreign key set up here's a foreign key foreign key and a primary key I beat this dead horse or not so all right now back to back to this so and so I have my I have my my tables I have uh, my main form and sub form here main form sub form here's what the what the forms look like uh, Okay, here's donor ID number 10. Okay, donor ID number 10 belongs to these donations. But look at the table, donor ID number 10 is Elizabeth Lincoln. I just have the donor donation table. It streamlines the database a whole lot because it takes up a lot less space uh, by relating the, and then you can have the form and subform effect. You say, oh, by you save space in the in the database database table by this uh, putting a making it an integer or a, or a number make it a number data type and re relating you rather uh, you save more space because more give me more exact with your spacing okay here is uh, some blurbs. The information is from TBL donors. This information is from TBL donations. Okay, into the code here. The above image is the code behind the form form donor form. Each donor existed. Now the the current event. Well, I don't want to show you that. I want to show you the database here. Go back. Control W, close out of it. Control W, close out of it. And no, I don't want to save any changes. Okay, as I go through each of these these records, I'm getting the current event. Okay, current. I'm on this record. I'm currently, currently on Andre Fonseca currently on Howard Schneider and so on my current event what do I have on my current event if I go over here and go into design view I have events on current event I have a procedure that runs whatever the current event is called and so when I click the triple dots to build I'm um, going to the declaring variables, initializing variables. Here, here are my concepts. Okay, you can find out those concepts in the PDF. Uh, whenever I'm going through there, I'm saying, okay, well, yeah, I'm getting my donation amount. Let me use that. I'm cut. I get this this here function. If I right click and choose define definition, I can go directly to the function. Instead of actually clicking clicking the variable trying to figure out where it came from, 
So maybe you have like 15 different procedures. Uh, you could hunt and peg what you want, or you could just right click, right click on it and choose definition. And then you can choose last position and go back to where you started from. Okay. That's a pretty cool little feature. So you can right click and choose, well, I didn't even go there, but so I could double click, you choose definition, definition and last. Here's going there, here's going back. Okay. Nice. Because it's, it's very complicated when, or it's very cumbersome whenever, whenever you choose, and then you're here, and then you say, oh my gosh, I have all these forms in here. And here, this database, you don't have them, but in the other databases, you may have several different forms. And then you may say, where did this come from? Uh, what form did I come from? Well, if you right-click and choose last position, you go back to where where you came from. Okay, so on the current, at the current, uh, on the current record, uh, I'm getting the selecting my SQL string is going to be this. Oh, get donation and I'm passing it the SQL string. So I'm getting the donation amount for each one, and that is calling a function. So declaring a variable, I'm declaring a variable here. Dim s your SQL as string. Okay, declaring a variable and initializing variables i'm saying okay now i'm first i declare it a portion of memory for a string variable and then i'm assigning this amount this piece of text that whole string of text i'm sticking it inside of that variable and the lifetime of the variable just for this procedure right here. Okay, so if a lifetime of variable is just in that procedure. If I want it over, uh, you see you have <clears throat> just with the scope of the, the scope could mean, okay, who sees this? Who sees this? Well, it's either a procedure that sees it or the whole module all these procedures see it okay we can have a modular level variable and pretty much you put the oh, like a declare a modular one m i like to put prefix it with m so that i know that it's a, a modular one m is your sql uh sql as string then I could use that anywhere. I could use that in this procedure, and this procedure, any any procedure, any procedure will see that. And then I can have a global procedure that goes through. Okay, let me go back. <clears throat> the form we have a form here, and it's a a module form module we can also call it a module here we have a, a module so we have a procedure which is a bit of text a private or private sub and sub okay good that's said and done the scope would be just for this procedure then we have a modular level variable like the, like what i put at the top m underscore str sql <clears throat> Everybody, all these procedures within this module, FRM donors can see it. And now, if I want both these both these modules, FRM donors and donations, to see it, I'd have to do it over here. I'd have to do it in something like this module, where I can have a public, a public, a public variable that every module can see. Okay, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, invoke another procedure, so we did, by invoking this. <clears throat> that function right there. 
that function. We're invoking it. We're invoking. We're telling it. Okay, now it's your turn. Basically, programming is like we want to make it. Okay, handoff. Handoff. It's like a basketball game or uh, a soccer game or uh, I guess you can some some instances of football or like that too. You hand off, but you pass pass the ball. <clears throat> you pass the ball to all these different procedures so that they can hand they can do their work. So we're passing it to get donations so that I don't have to have this, this huge module. I could just have a I could have a a simple a simple module just calling these different procedures. So we have one little one and then it's calling all these other other uh all these other functions or sub procedures and all that. <clears throat> all right. Uh invoke another procedure. Yeah, we did that. Passing argument to a procedure. Okay, we're passing argument to this procedure. Now notice that when I press open parenthesis, it knows right away that I'm expecting this. It's a this is a tell sense. And if you you probably have intelligence, or if you've seen it, you just kind of ignored it, maybe. But that's really the bottom line. What it what it what it means. It just gives you a hint what it what it needs, what kind of arguments it needs. And check for null values. Use this is null. Uh, I didn't include that here. Okay. Well, let's see. You see, <clears throat> let's see if, uh, if, okay, well, I'm just going to say str equals. S your equals and Z. That says that's one thing that's unique to access is null is it's this and Z function. And if 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 it's a null value, if there's nothing in there, then make it something just so you don't have any errors because a lot of times you have errors that pop up and it's because you have you didn't tell it. What happens if it's a null value? Well, if it's a null value, you just make it a zero. <clears throat> Again, leave it in the comments below. All right, so that covers everything in module one. Uh, again, uh, yeah, so uh, term scope. This adds a little more detail about what I was just talking about. Get donation amount, blah, 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 public, and, oh, I don't want to go there. Module 2, that's what the next video is going to be on, Module 2, responding to user actions. But that was it for Module 1. Again, coming out to vdhowto.com. Click in the description box below. I will I'll give you a, a a link to what the donors and donations database is. You want to learn some more and be able to uh, take all the concepts of the access programming course and put it into here, or you, you put them in a practical application. Here it is. And hope you enjoyed it. Make sure not to subscribe and don't like this video. <laughs> and I hope you have a great day. And also, leave any questions, like I said below, uh, previous, leave any questions you have in the comments below. Thanks for, thanks for your time and attention. Bye-bye.